the future of humanity isn't on Mars. It's on places like here, 253 Matilde, in the main asteroid belt. Its composition is rich in carbon, water, and organic compounds for life support and fuel production. We already have crucial experience colliding with comets, such as during the European Space Agency's Rosetta mission. On September 30, 2016, the ESA commanded the Rosetta spacecraft to perform a controlled descent and collision with Comet 67P, effectively ending the mission. This final descent allowed Rosetta to capture close-up images and gather data until the very last moments before impact. With missions like these, we know how to get to these asteroids in our solar system, and that is extremely important. Another thing you need to understand is that despite what you've been told by figures like Elon Musk, terraforming is by far the most impractical and inefficient way to make more living space for humanity. It's all around just a bad idea. The energy required to make a place like Earth outweighs the land we'd get trying to terraform other planets like Venus and Mars. The best way forward for our species in the solar system is to become voidborn. Imagine habitats made out of hollowed out asteroids that spin to create artificial gravity. These habitats could have the surface area of a small country, which is more than enough for people to live in. In fact, the surface area and internal size of a medium-sized asteroid is about equivalent to the country of Germany. By drilling into and colonizing a single medium-sized asteroid, we could make a new home for millions of people. That means for every asteroid we put landers on, they could potentially offer a Germany-sized ground for us to settle on. The concept is simple. Many people know that the surface area of the moon is about the same size as Russia. That means, from a country's perspective, successfully settling on a medium-sized asteroid will add another Germany to the size of their territory. When countries see the value in adding another Germany to their already existing landmass every few years, they will rush to reach and colonize these asteroids. There are approximately 2 million asteroids that we could establish habitats on in our solar system. Going back to the example before, imagine the potential of humanity if we had 2 million more Germanys to add to our world and our population. That's the equivalent of several hundred Earth-like planets in our solar system alone, and we have all the resources we need sitting in our asteroid belts to make these asteroid colonies self-sufficient. And on top of self-sufficiency, those asteroids could provide trade and resources for back home on Earth, as well as accepting our excess population, making life here on Earth more sustainable. We already have experience chasing and landing on comets and asteroids. We know how to build space habitats there, but terraforming on the other hand, while more popular, and more in the public conscious is more complicated. As of now, most of the concepts that we would need to even start terraforming remain theoretical. Not to mention, with building new human communities on asteroids, if one habitat fails, that won't be catastrophic. There is safety in dispersion. After all, isn't that why we went into space in the first place? Whereas with Mars, if it turns out for some reason that we can't successfully settle there, or something catastrophic happens, that means all the resources we invested into life on Mars up until that point will be for nothing. It is much cheaper and much safer with greater potential to chase and settle asteroids in our solar system. Colonized habitable asteroids are much better for humanity than settling on the other planets in our solar system. With an asteroid, you can control the gravity future colonists experience how long day and night would be, as well as the atmospheric conditions. On top of that, 
Asteroids also offer more than enough shielding from radiation, a very difficult problem with exploration in our solar system. Our asteroids that we settle could have potentially a 24-hour day with the exact same gravity as Earth, eliminating one of the biggest problems with settling and colonizing space. It is entirely possible to build a space habitat inside of an asteroid with those conditions. Additionally, if we have already colonized the moon, some of our asteroids could be made to match the three-hour long day and low gravity of the moon. It's entirely possible to adjust some asteroids to those specifications as well. All that is required would be to create an artificial spin on the asteroid to create artificial gravity. That could be accomplished with simple burns and thrusters attached to spin the asteroid. Additionally, clouds of gases could be released around the asteroid to create a small atmosphere. While these gases would need to be replenished constantly, they still potentially make asteroids more habitable. But even still, most people would still be living inside of the asteroids, reducing the need to retain an atmosphere, unlike settling on other planets like Mars and Venus. This is because, inside of asteroids, it is much easier to keep the tunnels and rooms of an asteroid settlement filled with nice breathable air because it is already contained by the asteroid itself. Going further, we could potentially build millions of asteroid habitats with every possible environment inside of them. With planets, on the other hand, that's just not the case. Venus, for example, has a day longer than a year. That is impossible to change. While Mars, on the other hand, simply cannot retain an atmosphere and has no magnetic field. With a space habitat, though, we can control those factors such as the length of the day with simple maneuvering burns, as well as control the magnetic field. Thinking even further into the future, there's even more potential. We could boost these asteroids after we have colonized them and relocate them anywhere in the solar system to transfer populations and supplies. Whereas with Mars and Venus, they aren't going anywhere. They're impossible to move. Think of these asteroid colonies like a massive solar aircraft carrier and a supply ship all in one, but as the size of Germany. We could easily accelerate these asteroids and send them even to nearby star systems. And on the way to these nearby star systems, it would be much easier to live inside of an asteroid the size of Germany with local supplies and water than to stay in a small aluminum titanium tube for a hundred thousand years. With the amount of possibilities available to us with the construction of space habitats, trying to settle on Mars just doesn't make sense. Going to Mars and living on Mars is something we would have to think about over the next 500 years, while building on asteroids and inside of them is something that we can easily do in decades, in fact, before the century has even closed out. So let's spend less time thinking about Mars when we can think about asteroids. Asteroids can give us millions of new homes with enough space for another 10 Earths worth of population. Mars isn't our only option, and it's time we started taking smaller but more numerous options, asteroids, more seriously. For more top lists just like this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out our other videos and watch this video on screen now about what it would be like to visit exoplanet J1047B.